Sky Blue Studios Unreal Engine 4 tutorial series. In this new chapter, we will be covering the Unreal Motion Graphics Editor, or UMG. Now this chapter will be aided a lot by interaction from you guys. You can request tutorials on specific parts of the editor, or a specific idea. In this first part, we'll just go through the basics of the user interface. So first things first, we've got to create our new widget. So a widget is a visual blueprint that can be added to the screen of a player. So we'll just right click, go use interface, widget blueprint. I'll just call it widget underscore menu. Then double click to open. Okay, so now you're greeted with the UMG UI. So you'll see right in the center, we have the main visual panel, which is where we can see a preview of our current uh, widget. You want to make sure that you're in 1080p. So I'm in 1080p already, but you're probably set to 720p by default. Uh, this won't make a whole lot of difference, but it'll just make it easier for you to figure it out um, because you're probably running a 1080p monitor. So then you have the palette over here. Now the palette has all of the controls that you can add to a widget. So controls are different interactable pieces of logic that can be placed onto the visual blueprint. So you have borders, which are like background buttons, which you can click on and events fire. Checkboxes, which are booleans that can be on and off. Images, which is just displays an image. Name slot, which is like a place in which you can place something else. Progress bars, which uh, display a given amount filled up of a bar based on the value given. Sliders, which allow you to select a value along a line. Text, which just displays text, and a text box, which is like text except it's editable by the user. There are a bunch more different controls as well, but we'll go through those at a different point in time in a future tutorial. Then you have the hierarchy, which if you're if you're familiar with UE4, you have a hierarchy over here, which is called the world out outliner, which shows you all the objects. That's the same basic idea as the hierarchy. So you have all your different controls uh, arranged by parenting here. Then you have the animations tab, which is based off of UE4's upcoming new animation system, which is going to replace Matinee. It will be faster and easier, but at the moment it's not out. However, UMG's animation is based off it, so it's, it's pretty easy to use. Um, obviously we don't have anything, so I can't show it yet, but we'll go over, it, go over that in a future tutorial. Then you have the details panel. So if I just drag in a button, you'll see all the details come to life. So you have all the different settings for this particular control under its particular parent. Because each parent gives certain properties to its control. As you can see a slot, canvas panel slot. That's because this button is a child of the canvas panel over here. So for instance, if I put a piece of text inside this button, you now see that instead of having the canvas panel where we had locations and positions and size and everything we now have button slot which just gives us padding and alignments so different parents give their children different available properties and so that's the basic overview of the UI but before we actually create anything this tutorial is just going to the UI but I just would like to point out that you have to actually make it you have to actually create the widget and add it to the player's viewport otherwise nothing will actually happen with it so what you need to do is we'll do it in player. We'll just make sure that you're on begin player. I mean, you can you can do this at any point. So you can make it come up. You can make up a menu come up or something when you die or anything. But just for the basics, just for a basic tutorial, we'll just do it on begin play. So you want to create a new variable. We'll just call it menu. Obviously, it's not actually a menu yet. We'll do it in a future tutorial. But yeah, make a widget. But we don't actually want a widget. We want to use a widget. We want a class because it's not actually a real instance in the world yet. We'll default it to widget menu, compile again, and save. Then we want to drag out this variable. We want to get it. We want to create the widget. So you can't actually add a widget to a viewport before it's being created. This is like spawning in a blueprint because it has to actually exist first. We'll make the owning player, owning player. And you want to then add this to viewport, so add to viewport. So now, when we begin play, if we compile and save, we can't use get owning player, we need to use player controller. 
We're going to call and save. We're going to start them up and save again. Press play. You'll now see that we have the button on the screen. You'll see though that my mouse has disappeared uh, when we went into the screen. That's because you have to have you have different input methods. So if you go input method, oops, input mode, you have game and UI, game only and UI only. In this case, we only want UI only because we're pretending it's a menu. So we make the target and you blue. Uh, the target has to be the play controller, so we put it on play controller. In widget to focus, we make our widget. And lock mouse to viewport, you can change whether or not the mouse will be locked to the viewport. We'll leave this unchecked for now. Now compile and save. But one thing we need to do before is if we play this now, the mouse will just disappear again and we'll go into the game, even though we've set to UI only, uh, UI only input method. We actually have to create a background for this widget as well. So we just drag in a border, make it full size anchor. So we'll go over anchors in a future tutorial. But you'll see it still doesn't go full size. That's because these locations now became offsets. So if we make these all zero, you'll see now it takes up the full screen. You'll also see that it's taken over our button. That's because the Z order, by default, if you don't give things there in order, it'll just go by whichever been is add, has a, whichever has been added first. So we'll just go Z order negative one. Now the button is on top. We'll also make the button bigger. There we go. Now if we compile and save, and then play, you'll see you can't click into the world and we have our text our button. So that concludes this tutorial on UE4. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you subscribe if you want to see more. Bye.